Hey, I'm Cody from Unqualified Gamers, a podcast member of the Gunna Geek Network, just like the one you're listening to right now. The opinions expressed are those of each individual. Check out other podcasts at GunnaGeekNetwork.com and get ready because geekiness begins in three, two, one. You have been granted clearance by director Phil Coulson. Stand by for S.H.I.E.L.D. debriefing. All information to be discussed here is classified and may only be discussed among agents granted clearance by the S.H.I.E.L.D. director. Now it's time for your scheduled debriefing. I'm Agent Stargate Pioneer. I'm Agent Haley. I'm Agent Lauren. And I'm Adam. Welcome to Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., a Marvel Comic Universe podcast. This is podcast number 68 on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Season 2, Episode 16, Afterlife. This podcast is recorded on Wednesday, April 8th, 2015. Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a fan-based podcast on the ABC television show, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Marvel's Agent Carter, soon to be Daredevil, and the general Marvel Comic Universe. Because of family reunions. If you'd like to talk to us about your family reunions, you can contact us on our website, legendsofshield.com, at our voicemail, 844-THE-BUS-1, that's 844-843-2871. You can contact us on our Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and YouTube, all Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., and our forums, forums.gunnageek.com, or by searching Gunna Geek on the Tapa Talk app. And... Welcome to our podcast, and Adam, welcome to our podcast again. Is this number two for you? Uh, yeah, number two for uh, Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, but you can be found at a bunch of different Gonna Geek podcasts, can't you? Well, I've been on one episode of Crimson Comet Yeah, so far. He's making the rounds. Hopefully an episode of Starling Tribune this season, but I haven't talked to Wing about that yet. Yeah, just bug him and he'll let you on eventually. That's kind of what happened to the rest of us, actually. Well, no, he <laughs> bugged us, and then, okay, well, anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we're here to talk about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and we had an episode yesterday, Afterlife, and as I said before, these episodes are just getting better, but I just can't wait until the end of the season. I can't wait till Avengers Age of Ultron and any tie-in. Can't wait for this weekend for Daredevil. It's just a bunch of great stuff going on in the Marvel Universe. As for this particular episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Afterlife, it was written by Craig Tilty, and I happened to go onto his IMDb page, and I was like, yeah, I wonder what this guy is. I think his name is Titley. Titley? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you aren't a celebrity on Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. unless I butchered your name, that's for sure. Okay, but he has been the consulting producer this year on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. He was the consulting producer on The Cape. Hey. Yeah, he's written a couple of episodes this year of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., including The Writing on the Wall and Afterlife. Oh, he wrote Blue Shadow Virus and the Zillow Beast for Clone Wars. Yeah. Oh, wow. He's gotten some cred there. Yeah. And then this episode was also directed by Kevin Hooks, who, if you look at his IMDb page, if you just happen to glance at it, if you're like, huh, I just wonder who this guy is. It's like, wow, holy crap, executive producer on a lot of stuff and writer on a lot of stuff as well. I can't even. He did an episode of Alphas. He did a few episodes of Bones. He did 14 episodes of Prison Break, four episodes of, I guess, season three and four of 24, did Alias. He did the TV movie of Sounder, which was one of my favorite books as a kid. Last Resort. <laughs> Three episodes of V back in the 80s. <laughs> My gosh, this wow. guy's been around for Four a while. Four episodes of Saint Elsewhere back in the 80s. He was he was an uncredited actor in Shallow How. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and I forget if you mentioned this, but he directed The Magical Place last season. Oh. That episode, so. Yeah, a little bit of cred going on there. So we've got some really experienced crew for this episode, which is really great because the way it turned out was just fantastic. As always, if you're looking for a transcript of the episode, you can go to the lovely foreverdreaming.org website and check that out. But in the meantime, I, you know what? I think, Haley, you just need <laughs> to let your tiger loose. 
Sorry, Starpie. Tiger's been loose for a while. <laughs> so how do you think that was going? Did Colson actually believe he was going to be able to bargain for that car or was that planned all along? He had a suitcase full of cash. Do you think it was cash in there? I don't I never saw the cash. Yeah, I didn't see the cash either, but I saw it later in the episode, I thought. At the cabin. Yeah, when he opened up the suitcase in the cabin, there was a pile of cash in there, uh, and then he got oh, yeah. some other stuff out. I was distracted by the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going on. You got to admit, the DIY Howling Commandos kit was a lot cooler than the cash. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it was his to-go bag, right? <laughs> Part of it, at least. Yeah, it's like most people's bug out bag or whatever it is, is like, you know, extra clothes, first aid kit. His is, you know, holographic playing cards. <laughs> I know which one I'd rather have. I kind of wanted them to be exploding playing cards, and it would be kind of like Gambit. That's what I thought they were going to be. <laughs> Blame Fox for it not being that. <sighs> I thought that they were going to be just like sitting there, and when he was like, shh, I thought he was going to like turn back and then throw the cards at them. It was so much better than that. <laughs> yeah. It was. I mean, this was just like the bro vacation between Hunter and Colson going around. And Colson just pulling Hunter's string all along, right? He pulls the alarm while Hunter's asleep. So Hunter <laughs> wakes up to the Quinjets going on. And he calls Deathlock. And he has no idea that. De oh my gosh, Deathlock showed up. Right? Yeah. Right? He's here, guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, with Colson saying he called one man for backup. I thought. They might have snuck in a Sam Jackson appearance on us without any hints leaking out. But See, at first I was thinking Maria Hill, and then I was like, oh, maybe we're going to get one of the Avengers here. Nope. I was thinking it was going to be Clint Barton because Jeremy Renner has said, yeah, I'd love to be on the show. And I was like, could you imagine if they'd been able to sneak him on with just no warning or anything like that whatsoever for us? But no, this was awesome. I was so happy to see him. I was so happy to see the upgrades to Deathlock. And then, seriously, how many weeks has it been, Star Pie, that you were like, where's Deathlock? Yeah, it's got to be at least a month, month and a half. All season? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Like, where's Deathlock? We left him off at the end of season one, and it's like, oh, come on, the guy's roaming around out there somewhere. Agent Peterson, call me Mike. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it was so awesome. That was amazing. I really loved it. And this whole, I can hear you. I love that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it does kind of play into Gonzalez's hands with how he's building that narrative of Coulson building his own super-powered army, though. So. Yeah, because Fury didn't have one of those. <laughs> 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 hey, you use the super-powered hand you're dealt. <laughs> Sky. He's just jealous because he doesn't have his own super army. <laughs> I have, uh, of course, we all do, but I definitely have my suspicion on Robert. I don't trust him. I really don't. And he's trying to get in with me. It's like, okay, well, here's a gun. You can go ahead and shoot me. I think actually he was daring her to do that because I think he believes he should be dead. My husband and I, okay, so first of all, two things. One, I just texted y'all a little earlier today. Remember last week we were going on about, is it a regular aircraft carrier? Is it a helicarrier? Right. So Avengers was just on FX. Like it's still on as we are talking. So we're watching it while we're eating dinner, and all of a sudden, it kind of hits both of us. What if the reason that Fury wanted them or directed them to sink this helicarrier, this thing in case of emergency, was because it is a helicarrier, and he doesn't want anyone getting their hands on it? What if there's nothing it's carrying, it's just the helicarrier itself? And the other thing that I wanted to bring up that Scott brought up, my husband, is that May has handled weapons how many times she would know if it was armed or not. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. Like, I, I flashed back to Grant Ward being like, lose the half ounce. She would know yeah. if there's bullets in that gun. Well, they could have been blanks. That might have been enough. She can tell the difference. She can. She's, she's just awesome that way. She'd know. Yeah. True. Just throwing that out there as an option. Which reminds me, I know this is skipping way ahead, but that preview for next week. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen this week's preview yet. Oh, ah. okay. Uh, <laughs> ah. It'll be on Facebook tomorrow. It'll be on Facebook. So, it, well, you can find it on YouTube like now, but sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, for a little inside joke, Haley does not have the capability to use YouTube right now for whatever reason her internet service provider has decided to block her from YouTube. <laughs> Uh, I can't say the words I want to say because we try and keep this podcast family friendly. <laughs> yeah. But I have words. Just there, The good thing about being a sci-fi fan is there are so many work-appropriate substitution words you could use. I need an anatomy substitution word. Oh, that's why you should watch Farscape. <laughs> There's some really good anatomy substitution words there. 
I do need to watch Farscape. It is you five do. feet behind me. <laughs> Dude, do it. Do it. Do it. You're going to like it, yeah. it a lot. It's your type of show. If you can get through the first six or seven episodes, you should be good. It gets so much better. Yeah, if you can, especially by the end of the first season. Oh, my gosh. But what I want to say is eat a bleep, Crockan. <laughs> <laughs> I have to watch Daredevil this weekend, so leave me alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do. Yeah, that's true. Going back to the scene with the gun, that was a straight up Adama move. There, it was. It was. He was so Adama this whole oh episode, my. and that's why I want to trust him because I just inherently want to trust Edward James almost because he was the math teacher in Stand by Me. He's Selena's dad <laughs> in Selena. He's Adama. How can you not want to just trust him and like him? But there's something that's just, I don't know if I can trust him. There's something seriously off about this. It's the whole, why didn't he approach Coulson to begin with? Why did he have to infiltrate Coulson's team? Instead exactly. Of, yeah, I just, I don't get it. Yeah, Honestly, until this episode, I thought it might still end up with them coming together more or less peacefully, but I don't see that now. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I think there'll be factions that come over. I think it'll be a lot like the Pegasus and the Battlestar Galactica, right? Where at the end, the people that wanted to come over to the fleet did come over to the fleet, but the ones that didn't all ended up dead on the Pegasus mm -hmm. in Battlestar Galactica, right? Yeah. 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 Well, Gonzalez said, his actions are leading us to a deadly showdown. And I'm like, dude, you started this whole thing. Yeah. I yeah. think more Gonzalez's actions. Like you busted down his wall, gassed his people. He's leading us to a showdown. Uh, tried to take out baby Sky. Yeah, jerk face. We didn't see um, Agent Calderon in this episode, did we? No. No, my guess is he's fine. He, yeah, he'll be fine. He's still trying to find a big pair of tweezers to get the splinter out. <laughs> <laughs> World's nastiest splinter. Yeah. If Sky had actually killed one of his people, they would have mentioned that. But she just almost killed seven of his people. Right. Which I did think it was pretty hypocritical of her to... Just go off on Reyna like that. Like, you killed people. Sky, you were learning how to use a sniper rifle. <laughs> yeah, but she had a badge behind her. You know, it's all good. And I think, actually, they had a sniper icer before they had a pistol icer. That's right. It was the very first, pi it was the pilot episode. Yeah. With the snipe. Uh, have we seen the sniper rifle icer since? We've only seen pistol icers since the pilot. Mm. Okay. All right. Sky's magical acupuncture room with the <laughs> white Star Trek-like clothes on the table. Did anybody get that vibe from it? Yeah. Did you see Chloe Bennett's tweet that those were real acupuncture needles? Oh, no. Oh, no. wow. Yeah, she was like, I was lying there with like 50 needles in me. Wow. And everyone's like, wow, wow, hardcore, man. I wonder if they were yeah. LED needles or if that was added after the fact. I would hope that's added after the fact, because that seems dangerous. <laughs> yeah. LED needles? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, you know, it could zap you, and that would not be fun. Well, if she got zapped, maybe she would levitate off the table. That's comic <laughs> books. Yeah, I did like Lincoln, though. I have been bitten by spiders and caterpillars and injected by all sorts of stuff before, and I've yet to develop superpowers. So until that <laughs> happens, I am not I going swear. to go through the zappy acupuncture. I have not said this yet on the podcast, but when I was editing the past couple of weeks, I'm like, you know, Lauren is one bad lab accident away from being a supervillain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll tell you a quick story. It was a really nice day, and I was getting ready to go have to do some terrible work, and I saw a bunch of people in hammocks across the street from my car, and I glared at them, and one of them fell out of their hammock. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I have superpowers. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yep. Yeah, but they call that place afterlife? That's not ominous at all. <laughs> nope, only good things could possibly happen here. <laughs> oh, of course. And the only way in or out is through Gordon zapping in and out? Yeah, I hope nothing ever happens to Gordon. Jeez. <laughs> They'll all be stranded there. Maybe there's only like one teleporter born into every generation or something. <laughs> They're going to be eating nothing but kale and cold popcorn for the rest <laughs> of their lives. <laughs> and it doesn't happen until the end of the episode, but Sky's mom is there and she's <laughs> alive. Oh my God. Yeah. Not entirely surprising. I think <laughs> we did throw that out there as a possibility. Well, yeah, I've been expecting her to come back. 
But I was watching, I was so tired when I was watching this episode last night and I like jumped out of my bed and <laughs> shouted when the, she walked in. <laughs> Me too. I know it was like 1130 when I got to that point because I was doing the Gonna Geek podcast last night. So I didn't get to live tweet or anything. Well, I so missed that, by the way, Lauren. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> and anyway, so I'm all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, it's Sky's mom. It's Sierra. She's there. She's there with the scars on the face and everything. Yeah. So you know it's her. Yes. Yeah, I, I like that. Even if she does have like Wolverine style. Uh, rapid healing apparently Whitehall <laughs> well, took it right to the limit it's not really rapid so much as I would say is it took her like 20 years well yeah like 20 years but when she first showed up at first I'm like okay no it's gonna be a fake out it's gonna be a twin sister or something but then they showed the scars and I'm like nah it's her it is so her what do you think and this then, is Arrow last week <laughs> <laughs> okay so when she shows up and she sees Callaghan did any of y'all think that she was just going to, when he was like, can I see her? Did any of y'all think that she was going to say no and snap his neck? Because yeah. that's totally what I thought was going to happen. I, I, I knew I, she was going to say no. I didn't think she would snap his neck. Yeah. Well, the whole time she's treating him with this superior, like, okay, nice boy. I don't know why they keep him alive. I don't because he is not in control. Is it in deference to her? Is it because he has something they need? I wonder, is it sentimentality? I'm guessing we'll see at some point in the future. But just, wow, that they, he was not in a good place this episode. He was. I mean, he was. Has he been? <laughs> as an actor, it was an incredible scene for him, right? Because he's playing this, I am so out of my mind. I am mad. I don't even know what day it is. There's not a window. Come on. What is going on? And then the realization hits him. And it's like, oh, you found her. She's here. And yeah. it was like, oh, yes. Just seeing that switch. It was just, oh, I love that. It was the same switch as we saw a couple of episodes with the last time we saw him, right? When he's mm -hmm. in that same room and he's like, okay, well, I'm going to go see the elders. Well, I'm assuming we're going to go see the elders right. or whatever. Yeah. So how long has he known that she's still alive? That's what I want to know. I know. I think just since Gordon took him there, probably. Okay. Well, because he says that he told her he would find their daughter, which makes me think it might be longer than that. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Oh, that's even more twisted. Yeah. But Sky doesn't know right? that that's her mom, though. And how is she going to react when she finds oh, out? Oh, man. Okay. But what Jai Ying said to Sky, I'll look after you, train you, watch you grow. And if you don't feel a connection between us worth exploring, well, we never have to see each other again. Yeah. Oh. As an estranged parent, you kind of have to go that route. Yeah. When we were watching it yesterday, we were pointing out that just look at what a complete... 180 that is from how Cal was trying to handle Cal was trying to force her she's like you love me I'm your dad love me Daisy that's your real name yeah and Jaying is not even telling her that there's this relation between them she's just going to let her see if anything develops and if so then maybe she'll tell her and if not then it's just as well as far as Sky is concerned though didn't Cal mention to her that she was dead Whitehall killed her mother. Yeah. yeah, he just said Whitehall killed her mother. Yeah. And by the way, Whitehall's still out there. I mean, we all believe that he's not dead. Okay, and then who else among those people knows that she is Skye's mother? Because I feel like Gordon almost definitely knows. I think Lincoln might know. Well, when she mentioned that she was personally going to be Skye's transitioner, did you see the look on his face? Yeah. Yeah, but I just assume that's because she's somebody just so respected in their community. Right. Yeah, it could be. I'm not sure if he knows that it's because they're related. Or that he thought he was going to be the one to do that. That too. Right. I think he's still going to be involved, though. They didn't bring him in as a character just to brush him aside in an episode. Oh, no. And they've hyped up too much the fact that he's joining the show for it to just be a one episode thing. And you didn't get your shirtless scene. <laughs> yeah. Maybe next week. His shirt allergy hasn't taken effect yet. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a little while in China, right? Right. Yeah, the allergies have to set in. Yep. He has terrible pickup lines, I maintain. <laughs> oh, the yeah. puns. He puns yeah. so hard. Yeah. Sky's the limit. <laughs> I love a good terrible pun, but there is a time and a place. And that was not it. Well, his puns can't be banned in China, at least. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's a secret. Yeah. <laughs> so he did make a big deal about Sky going through her terogenesis old school with the diviner at the temple. So how are they doing it for the people who qualify? Well, it's still terogenesis, right? Yeah, it's just, I guess, some kind of ritual, I guess, that everybody's... Because he said in the wild. 
So I'd imagine that there's some that are just kind of out there hidden that other people have gotten a hold of. And this is how it used to be before they formed this community. Mm. So I guess now it's a much more ritualized thing. Well, I wonder if it's a more controlled thing. You know, they do it in a lab or a medical room or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they have some way of making some of the mist themselves then? Or they've just released it from the diviner and they're storing it in some other means for injection or whatever. Yeah, in a bubble or something like that. Yeah. Ah. So numerous times they mentioned you are protected here, you're safe here, whatever. And it was before that they let on that Reyna was there as well and Cal for that matter. But do you get the feeling that all inhumans are coalesced in one unit? What do you mean? Mm. They're all thinking... They're all part of one group, right? There's not splinter in human groups. I don't know. They did say I thought that I could have misheard, but I thought they said that there might be other places, but they didn't know for sure for their own safety. Yeah, he said something along those lines. Okay, so you have separate groups, but they're all... They're all connected. They're all like part of the same culture. Yes, where they would all protect each other. I'm kind of wondering if there's another group that's been isolated for a long time. That they don't know about. Maybe in a dome somewhere in China (laughs) that they don't know anything about. Yeah, it could be. Yep. Gordon can go into some fantastic places. (laughs) Yeah? Just like Lockjaw. Yeah, even though (laughs) Cal can't talk to him eye to eye. (laughs) Oh. What a dick. He really is. Okay, but when he was talking to her about Reyna, I noticed that he chose his words very carefully, and I was like, oh, he's lying to her. Oh, yes. Lie by omission. I promise there is no one here who will harm you. I was like, oh, Raina's in that cabin. You <laughs> are such a terrible liar. Yeah. What's there? Oh, we don't use it anymore. Walk on. <laughs> oh, so that was the cabin that Raina was in? I thought it was the yes. original Red Room or whatever. I thought it was either the cabin that Raina's in or where they were keeping Cal. Mm, could be. Yeah, I feel like Cal's underground, though. I think that yeah. was Raina's room. Yeah, I'm not sure if Lincoln knows about Cal. You're going to want to keep Cal somewhere where he can't bust out of the room. And that building looked a little flimsy to me. Yeah. Also, I think it had a window. That's it. Yep. Yeah, because maybe he could break down a Hulk-resistant door like Shield's little battering ram could. <laughs> it was more than a little <laughs> battering ram. <laughs> well, and it did take an hour, I suppose. And- <laughs> well, it was an hour to bust through a door that was meant to sustain the Hulk. Why did Fury trip the alarm so early? Why didn't he wait until Deathlock was closer to flip that switch? You mean Coulson? Yes. Coulson, Fury, equal amounts of badass. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just set plans in motion and he was like, okay, we can do this. I think he was legitimately caught by surprise that the second Quinjet was there. I do too. But even if it was just the one Quinjet, why not wait for your backup to be in position before you call in the guys you're trying to steal from? He is a very capable S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, and Hunter has proved himself capable as well. I think the two of them could have pulled it off had that other Quinjet not been cloaked right there. And why didn't other S.H.I.E.L.D., why weren't they monitoring the cabin? Because they knew that Coulson had been there recently and probably would be trying to find Sky. I think they have limited resources. And they might not be tapped into all of the places that are tapped in via the base that they're at. It's the only solution I can... Or maybe obstructionism. Yeah. These aren't airtight episodes, right? Because last week we were like, what's up with Bobby? Why did Coulson let Bobby escape right there? He should have put that together. And so they're just little plot holes here and there. But I don't care. It's very entertaining. I love it. (laughs) Yeah, Richard in the chat has an interesting theory. He says that he thinks... The second Quinjet was Bobby's idea. Well, she was talking to Gonzalez and she said, Colson's too smart for this. He's got something going. Yeah. I think that after that conversation, they were like, okay, what is Colson after? Oh, he's after a mode of transportation. He's after a cloak and he's after a faster way to get around, which would be a Quinjet. So I think they put two and two together there. They just didn't execute it as well as they could because they didn't know that Deathlock was going to be part of the equation. Yeah, because she does seem kind of conflicted now. She's getting more and more conflicted, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, I have a theory. We haven't talked about it yet, but the whole bait and switch thing over the toolbox with Simmons and Fitz, that was excellently executed. Yeah. Science babies! Yeah, there you go. (laughs) Yeah, I was worried at the beginning that she might have actually turned, and then I thought maybe she was just trying to drag it out, make it take a long time, but I didn't expect that. See, when Fitz was looking at the picture, I was thinking, he's figured out that she's rigged it to blow up or something. 
Which is why I was like, oh no. Okay. When I watched it through the second time, taking my notes, I noticed the conversation that Simmons and Bobby had about it. And I wasn't entirely sure what side Simmons was on. I'm still not because they were talking about how to open it, right? Mm -hmm. And Simmons was talking about, well, we are shield agents. So she might have converted over to the Adama shield or Gonzalez shield, whatever you want to call it. And in order to get the toolbox open, knowing that she couldn't do it herself, put it in the hands of Fitz and make him think like he's going to be on Coulson's side, but monitor him the whole way. Because I don't believe for one second that they let him go without monitoring. What I was thinking when he was looking to see what she was doing, why would she do that? Unless, dot, dot, dot. I was thinking, oh, her Hydra brainwashing is kicking in right this second, and she's scanning the thing for Hydra, and he was going to go bust her for that. Until he picked up the thing and was tossing it around, and I was like, oh, no, they're doing the bait and switch. But at first, I was thinking Hydra. See, I still think that Simmons is on Coulson's side. Yes. And she's just doing what she did before and just doing deep cover again. It can go either way at this point because I see it both ways. It's a possibility that she has flipped over to Bobby. Yeah. I would say that except she was so harsh with Fitz that she would only do that if she knew that he knew what was going on. Yeah. Even when they're not getting along, you still see her trying to kind of placate him and everything. I think she might be playing him, though. I mean, she might have known that this is how he would react, that she would put the plan in motion, the bait for him to take and then play it all out. But in the end, she is still pulling the strings on it. I could just see it happening. And the whole sandwich thing was just meant to placate him a little bit more to say, yes, I am part of this. It could go either way. This is... Yeah. Yeah. I really don't think so. I think she's on Colson's side. I think that she realized what had to be done, that she sent fits out to go be the one to make contact with Colson again. And I think that she's staying in because she has that connection with Bobby and because she's made a big deal of you have to be loyal to S.H.I.E.L.D. in the past, that she's the one who'll be least suspected. Fitz, on the other hand, has been incredibly hostile to Mac ever since he found out about all of this. And with his medical stuff, he might not be able to pull off the lie Hmm. with his brain stuff. And the sandwich was a nice callback. That's exactly the same as the one from the hub. Yes. Prosciutto and mozzarella with a Mm -hmm. hint of fiesta rioli. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there was one thing I was really worried about for the first few seconds of that scene with Fitz and the taxi. I half expected Ward to end up being the driver of the taxi. (laughs) No. Especially since Coulson said they were going to Ward for help at the end of the previous scene. And yeah, I think that qualifies as a bad option. That is a bad option. Very, very bad option. Although it might it might enable them to get Agent 33 out of his grasp. I hope so, because she's the one I feel so bad for, and they need to get her away from him. But Ward is awful. By the way, Lauren, I did go back and look at that scene at the very end of that episode a couple of weeks ago. It was her original face that she had transformed the mask into, and she was looking in the mirror. Yeah, I saw she'd put her original face, but then I think she like switched the mask off or something. Yeah, she did. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, so List, help me. List is the guy who was at the end of... Winter Soldier. Oh. Winter Soldier, yes. Yeah, okay. And then he showed up in the meeting where they killed all the other Hydra guys. Yeah. Except for him. Except for him. He's the one that got away. All right. Yeah, he's the one who's like, but what about the twins, that guy? Right, okay. And he's the one who they said is trying to build a super-powered army for Hydra, so that's playing into the Avengers. Mm-hmm. Yes! Uh, oh my god, you guys, less than a month until Avengers. I oh know. my god! Oh my god. I just thought of something. That might be the tie-in between Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Avengers. Maybe Coulson's team feeds the Avengers the information on Strucker's facility, and that's why they go there at some point in the movie. Yeah, we're getting pretty close. Really close. That would make sense. Three weeks out. So what, we have three episodes before that happens? Ah. Uh. So, well. Yes. I think it would have to happen like that episode, just like we got the Fury a few days before Captain America Winter Soldier was the Fury SUV chase in Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. at the end of the episode. So that's three episodes away. I mean, uh, next week, the week after, then boom. All right. The last note I have, and I'm sure you guys have others, but the last note I have is when Sierra says that 
Cal sealed his fate and Sky's oh, fate. Oh, Gordon says that. Oh, Gordon says that. Okay. Yes. But what do you think that means? I don't know. I think that means they aren't going to let Sky go. I think it means they aren't going to let Sky stay. No, they might not let her go. I don't know, but either way, Sky's not going to like it. When I was watching it yesterday, I was thinking, oh, they're not going to let her stay with them because Cal's just going to cause too much trouble. But then I started thinking when you said that now, yeah, they're not going to let her go because she's a big flag to the outside world of, hey, this stuff is going on. Right, because so many people know what happened with her and with Reyna that they can't have them out anymore. Hmm. I could see that. I didn't do it at the beginning of the episode, but I always do my where are they? And two of them on there were Warden Agent 33. Well, I think the illusion at the end of the episode tells us that we're going to see him next episode. I could say Talbot, but, you know, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> what about Talbot's mustache? They might not be together. <laughs> Talbot and his mustache are still sleeping on the couch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talbot's mustache is a scroll. <laughs> <laughs> but the one thing that still concerns me are where are the Koenigs? I think they should be in the mix here somewhere. They honestly, I, I don't. They're playing Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, and he's going to be seen one more time on Justified. I, I don't remember if it's next episode or the following one, but uh, he's definitely making the rounds on two excellent TV shows this he's year. He's also on, I guess it's Battle Creek. I saw some pictures on his Tumblr. He's playing basically Rob Ford, the crackhead mayor of Toronto. Oh, that's great. <laughs> By another name, but yes. My notes are done. Lauren, do you have anything? Not off the top of my head. I need to start actually writing down notes again, but mostly I just kind of <laughs> sit there like, ah! Adam, what do you got? We talked about most of the May and Gonzalez scene, but we didn't talk about the end, how he offered her a spot on the S.H.I.E.L.D. board of directors. Right. And then the file for the Bahrain action as well. Right. I feel like he was just trying to legitimize whatever decision they end up making to Coulson's people that choose to stay. But even if she's on the board, it's going to be a vote of what, five to one against Coulson instead of five to zero. Right. Except I think she's going to flip Bobby. Yeah. Bobby's going to switch teams. Okay, I was going to ask, do you think Bobby's on the board? Oh, I'm not sure if Bobby's on the d board, yeah. Yeah. I, it seemed like she was. It seemed like it was Gonzalez. Weaver. The woman who was, yeah, Weaver. Yeah, Gonzalez Weaver called it on, and then I thought it was Mac. Beardy McBeardsley, <laughs> and then Mac, and Bobby. Oh, yeah, I forgot about Beardy McBeardsley. I don't remember that guy's name. Mac and then Bobby, so that's mm -hmm. like six, right? So, yeah, six, but Calderon, I think, is kind of laid out right now. Maybe out of commission for a little yeah. bit. Yeah, we'll see him back. Yep. I could honestly... Gonzalez seems, at least in that scene, he seemed at least somewhat reasonable, whether that's an act or not. May called him, you know, it's a witch hunt. We were pursuing Hydra because that's our job. And he's on a witch hunt through another shield instead of going after Hydra. As far as we know, they've never gone after Hydra. They've only ever gone after Coulson's shield. And I'm glad someone finally called him out on that, like, Okay, we just took out Hydra. What have you done? <laughs> or at least a portion. Like, I really do want to know what this other shield's been doing this whole time. Yeah, well, they've been protecting what's in the cargo hold. <laughs> Before we go on any further, I just read in the chat that Richard said that, did you notice that Fitz was not stuttering in this episode? And yes, he wasn't. He was a little bit more put together. He, he still wasn't the old Fitz, but he was closer to the old Fitz than we have seen him since he was thrown in the ocean. Science babies. <laughs> <laughs> science babies totally out spying the science babysitters this episode. I know, right? Oh. Right under their noses. Oh, go science babies. How can you not love the science babies? Cody. <laughs> Jeez, Cody. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that later. Haley, okay. do you have any quotes? Before I get to the quotes, I have one comment. Yep. Hunter was saying, you know, he didn't know if he could get the plane on the ground. I don't think it's that hard to get a plane on the ground. Uh, really? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, not, maybe in a satisfactory manner, but I think they're not that hard to get on the ground. It'll hit the ground eventually. <laughs> it depends on if you want to be in one piece or not. That's true. I expected Coulson to joke about that, too, <laughs> now that you too. mentioned that. He was like, I can get it on the ground. <laughs> in what shape? You know, not so much. Very Indiana Jones. Fly, yes. Land, no. <laughs> Yeah, and that was going around on Twitter a few weeks, a couple months ago now. Uh, oh, yeah, poor Harrison Ford, who is out of the hospital. Yeah. Yay. Yay! Again, as a pilot myself, I want to say the guy did an excellent job of putting that down and not hurting anybody. That was amazing. Amazing yeah. work. Okay, okay. Haley, you quotes. got some quotes. Yes, I do. You should have brought cupcakes. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. I forgot to mention that. Yes. It came around a couple of times. Bring cupcake. Hey, you know what? He should have brought May a cupcake. She would have killed him with it. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it would have helped. <laughs> no. I woke up naked on a table in a place no one can even point to on a map. So call me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you were totally naked. <laughs> yes, well, she was. <laughs> I mean, there was paper. <laughs> if it doesn't count in a doctor's office, I guess it doesn't count in a weird acupuncture. Am I the only one that saw the similarities to multiple different Star Trek scenes on that? I guess so. I think I got Star Trek out of the brain. There is it, it's just, it was very sci-fi-y. Yeah, okay. Like, not even a specific show or universe or anything, but it's just very sci-fi. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, it reminded me of something. I couldn't put my finger on what it was. Well, the next generation had Riker on a cloning bed like that at one point in time. It was in the original series a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah, so. See, it reminded me of a gynecologist's office, but with more needles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. and I go into so many OBGYNs. Okay. Okay, I just, I stumbled across this other note. It's not a quote, but Sky tried to vibrate Reyna apart. <laughs> yes. Yes, she did. Yes. She tried to use her powers to kill her. Yeah. Yeah. And thus was born at least five fanfics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. I think that's lowballing it. <laughs> uh, that's the definition of this podcast, though. Lowball, right? <laughs> that's why I said at least. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's all the quotes that I haven't mentioned already. Sky's the limit. All right. I, I forget who it was that said this, but someone called Gonzalez the love boat captain. <laughs> oh, Hunter did. Hunter. Yeah, probably yes. Hunter. Yeah. It was Hunter. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Well, next week, I think we're going to get a uh, little bit into history here. I hope we go to <gasps> yes. Bahrain. Yeah. yeah. The episode is named Melinda. It's going to be so great. And <sighs> yeah, it's excellent. So I can't wait for that. I am excited. And I can't wait to see the preview again because I did watch it. It was at the end of the episode, but I can't wait to see it again just to remind me of what's going to happen next week. And, uh, oh, just is so good. So good. I'm so glad we stole this podcast. I'm so glad they paid me <laughs> to take this podcast away from them. <laughs> so we get to see this every week and talk about it. So it's great. But next week, we will be back with the episode and a short first impressions on Daredevil and maybe a couple other surprises. So in the meantime, we have a surprise this week. So here we go. All righty. We do have a surprise. Haley actually traversed. She went out on an assignment and she went to PlanetCon Comic Con and she actually went to a couple of relevant panels and one was very relevant this week because it was J. August Richard who plays Deathlock, Mike Peterson. And while she was at there, she recorded some audio and we have some clips to play. But before we do that, do you want to preface the panel with any opening thoughts? I will say this was the last panel of the con and it was right after Stephen Amell. Stephen Amell was only there for like 12 hours that day and that was the only time he was there. So it was packed. The room was packed for his panel. And then as soon as he went back out to sign, the room emptied out because everybody ran to get in line for his signature and pictures <sighs> and stuff. Okay. So good seats for this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, excellent stuff too. And we have four clips that we're going to be playing. The first one is all about how... Jay August actually got notified of being Deathlock. Hi. So in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. pilot, we don't get much clue who Mike is. So when did they clue you in that he was Deathlock, and how did you feel about that? They probably clued me in, like, last weekend. No, I jokingly say that, but they, they really are very secretive about everything, even with the actors. So I literally, I've told the story a few times, I literally had a costume fitting for the beginnings of the Deathlock costume without even knowing what was happening. And I was getting very strange measurements taken and, and very um, la laser, um, what are those things called, like laser sculptures of my body taken. And um, I did that strange fitting, which was somewhere strange. It was like in the middle of nowhere in California. It was outside of L.A. Um, and uh, when I was driving back, they called me and said, I'm sure you're wondering what we're doing. Well, we're turning you into death lot. So, so I found out after my costume fitting. <laughs> It sounds like the mob, right? Take you out in the middle of the <laughs> desert, do something yeah. for it, and then on the way back say, oh, by the way. That's why you were there. It sounds like a drug deal. But it's a happy mob. <laughs> like Clark Gregg said, Marvel Studios is S.H.I.E.L.D. Exactly. 
<laughs> Definitely. The next clip we have is after he found out about what he was, about how he went about trying to play the character a little bit better. Hey, hey so uh, before you found out you would be Deathlock, how much did you actually know about Deathlock? And then after you found out, you mentioned you went and did your research. How many comics do you think you felt like you read since then? So um, prior to that, I was not familiar with Deathlock. I had seen him in passing in my boyhood days of collecting comics, but I didn't know much about the character at all. I started in the Guide to the Marvel Universe, which is very general and very generic. Then I found out that there were several iterations of the character throughout the years. Michael Collins, Luther Manning, um, I don't remember the other one's name. Um, so I started to read um, Deathlock's first appearance, and I started to read his first miniseries as well, and realized pretty early on that I needed to put it down, because I wanted to, I, once I understood the flavor of what those three Deathlocks and our Deathlock had in common, I wanted to keep that thread and I wanted to allude to the Michael Collins version because the circumstances were all different, you know, in terms of the story, but I wanted to stay true to our story, but there were things that I wanted to make sure because I think Deathlock is more of a theme than a character. It's about someone being trapped between technology and humanity and our version of technology was Hydra telling me what to do um, so I wanted to maintain the the idea of someone who's being trapped who's being forced to do things that they don't that they want to do someone who's in a internal battle internal struggle and so uh, that's what my research led me to um, someone who is as emotionally scarred as they were physically uh, and someone who is it was important to be a good father. So those were the, the ideas that I took from the comic books. And I tried my best to work in this expression that I noticed that the character always has this sort of frown with this very intense stare, and I try to capture that as much as I can. Cool, thanks. Thank you. I definitely think he's got the frown with the stare on, right? <laughs> yeah. He's in the cockpit, right, flying the thing. Uh, guys, I'm right here. I can hear you. I can hear you. you. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Yeah, his description sort of made me think of... Captain Picard being transformed into Locutus, at least a little bit. Yeah, the trapped yeah. piece of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely. And the things that Picard had to do after, and of course, what we're talking about is Star Trek The Next Generation. It was a couple of episodes called The Best, best of, both, of both Worlds. <laughs> yeah, some of the best Star Trek The Next Generation. I mean, there was some other good stuff in Star Trek, but those two episodes, Best of Both Worlds, Part 1 and Part 2, were my favorite of the entire seven years. I've seen those. Yep. Yeah. You get that reference? I get that reference. <laughs> yeah. So in those episodes, Patrick Stewart plays uh, an individual that has been transformed into a robot and cannot control himself at all. Cyborg. Yeah. I think a little bit of that is what happened to Mike Peterson as well. So he definitely was talking about how he played the character, which was so good. And of course, I listened to this before the episode, and I had no <laughs> idea that he was going to be on the episode this week. But I was watching the episode with those things in mind from this clip, and he does a great job of playing that character, given that. Yeah, good timing yeah. on doing these. <laughs> the, it was just, we picked this actually the night before the episode aired. We decided this was the one that we were going to include in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> so we had no idea. We're just that good. Yeah, right. <laughs> then there was another clip. And forgive how this begins, right? It kind of sounds a little maybe pornish, but it's not. It's it's a little girl. It's, is it a little girl? I believe it's a little girl talking Probably. and asking a question. So just stay with me for a few seconds. It gets a little funny. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> what was your like favorite moment of for like what you did with Agents of Shield? Like what was your favorite scene? I guess. That's a good question. That's a really good question. I had a lot of favorite moments. Let me think about this for one second. There were so many you know what I really loved doing? I loved doing the scene in the very first episode. Do you remember when the building blew up in the first episode and I climbed up the wall? Well, I, that was my favorite scene because I rehearsed that scene for two days before we had to shoot it, where I climb up the wall. And um, it was it was so much fun. Um, they had a stuntman there for me that day, and he did it a couple of times. and. 
they didn't need for me to do it, but Joss was like, you know, do you want to try it? And I was like, yeah, I've been rehearsing it for two days, I might as well. And um, it was early on in shooting the pilot, and um, the camera was on this big crane, and um, I just did it, and it worked out, and it was so cool, and it was just so much fun, because I felt like a real-life superhero in a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your question. I thought that was cute. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there were several times throughout the con where little kids would go up with questions and then, you know, they'd get there and they're so nervous they can't talk. Or adults, too, really. But. <laughs> right. <laughs> Say, I meant to ask you if there was one question that you could ask because you didn't ask a question, at least not that I heard. If there was one question that you could have asked him, what would you have asked? Him in particular? I don't know. It, honestly, it probably would have been about Buffy and not about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just because he has such a longer history, or not Buffy, but Angel. Angel he has such yeah. a longer history with that than he does with S.H.I.E.L.D. at this point and with Marvel stuff. Mm -hmm. But it, it, most of the time, I didn't feel the need to ask a question because the questions I would have asked, you know, somebody else would have. And I'll just stay there and get my good audio. Right. He did answer some questions about his appearance on Arrow. He answered a lot about Angel. So it wasn't just about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but we do have one more clip about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and I think you all are going to like this one, especially how it ends. I did love the whole relationship between Deathlock and Sky, and now that she's in the human, would you love a sky Deathlock team up? Hey, that would be so dope. But you got to watch out for her power, though. Her power's a little messy right now. I'm going to need her to get it under control, because I don't want to be feeling like I'm in an earthquake every time she, you know, is trying to get the guy over there and I'm standing next to her. I don't want to feel all that. So I can't wait for her to be able to zoom her powers in and, you know, let's give her some training and then she can join Deathlock in a mission. No, but I love Chloe so much and, and she was actually, her and I worked together on the first day of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So I feel like she's Mike's best friend on the crew. So, um, yeah, I would love for them to team up and take Ward out. Yeah. <laughs> I always say... Mike and Ward have an anti-bromance. Everybody wants to take Ward out. <laughs> He's so fun to hate. <laughs> he is, yeah. isn't he? Oh, everyone hates Ward. Yes, everyone hates Ward. It's a new TV show. But I really love when he's saying like, yeah, she used to get that power under control because, yeah, I don't want her cramping my style. <laughs> it's a little mess messy <laughs> right now. Oh, so great. I do want to see them team up again, though. That'd be great. I know. Yeah. I want to see more of Mike. Like, he can just be on the team permanently now. That's fine. Yes. Yeah, I think that's where we're going. I think if he had been around at the beginning of the season, it would have been an instant dynamic. Like, he would have been the silver bullet to come out and actually do everything. So Yeah, it would have made it too easy. I like that we're having him back now for the end, because he can just be super awesome all the way through. They don't have to come up with a reason to nerf him or the reason he can't go on this particular mission or anything like that. He can just wrecking ball the other shield. And we didn't talk about it in the episode, but I love his new mods, especially the one that took down that Quinjet. Uh, yes. <laughs> it was awesome. And obviously <laughs> cheesy CGI, but it was so good. It was so fun. The little rocket electrical thing that didn't kill anybody but took the Quinjet down. That was awesome. Almost like a amped up version of Black Widow's things from Winter Soldier. Yeah, and I was wondering where his mods came from, and they might have indeed come from Tony Stark, so we'll see. We will see. Or it could have just been Fitz. <laughs> it could have been. You know, there's a lot of good science people around. Matter of fact, we're going to see another one this summer with Ant-Man too. so <laughs> you never know. So thank you very much, Haley, for going and getting this audio. This was a blast. I will put a couple more clips on at the end, so stay tuned. It's a little teaser for you. Stay tuned, mm -hmm. and you'll listen to some fun stuff. But in the meantime, we're going to move on. And But before we do, I just want to take a little note to say, if you're a Walking Dead fan and you haven't checked out the Walking the Walking Dead cast, you really should. They did the Season 5 final cast, and in an all-American edition of The Walking Dead this week, because Steven had to bow out, Steve Boyd and Chris Farrell give their take on the season five finale of The Walking Dead named Conquer and go check it out. Check out what they think of this crazy finale and you can get your fill of The Walking Dead as you march towards the new spinoff series later this summer. Alrighty, we're going to move on to the news now, and we got uh, a lot of Avengers. Remember a couple of weeks ago when I said we're in full Avengers promo mode? We definitely are. So most of the Marvel news has been focused on the Avengers, but we did get a few 
Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. notes to talk about. And the first one was an article that Comic Book Resources ran on J. August Richards and his surprise S.H.I.E.L.D. return. It was definitely a surprise to us. We didn't know. And uh, Mike is now owning Deathlock. Oh, yeah. He talked about how Deathlock has a whole bunch of new abilities, like three USB ports, a Firewire connection, Wi-Fi, <laughs> and his arm makes cappuccinos. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Does YouTube work for him? <laughs> <laughs> Haley, I sense a uh, Haley Deathlock coming on. Uh, Haley Smash. Okay, that's what's coming on. <laughs> Well, talking about Smash, I think we got a little note about, I'm reading the article title right now, The Queen is Recognized. Yes. So, you know how we all love those wonderful little Pop Funko figures? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, guess who's getting one? Who? Is it the Queen? It's our Queen. It's Melinda May. (laughs) And we have a link with those and also Marvel Mopies, which are these adorable little stuffed animals that look great. Well, they're stuffed Hulk and Rocket Raccoon and Groot and Cap, and they look so grouchy, and I want them. (laughs) They are so cute. But most importantly, Melinda May is getting a Pop Funko figure, so I need one. Yeah. Adam, do you have any uh, Pop Funko figures on your desk in front of you? Well, up in my cabinet where they're cat safe, I have the (laughs) whole Mass Effect set they did. Oh. And I have a Kaylee from Firefly one on at my desk at work. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. Yeah. Kaylee is awesome. I need to get so many more of them. I just got a Ned Stark one. <laughs> yeah. Does it have his head attached? Yes, actually. <laughs> for now. <laughs> <laughs> well, talking about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., we did have some ratings for this week. This week, Afterlife had a rating of 4.24 for an overnight rating. Oh, that's up. Well, it's down like 0.02, but that's the overnight rating. What's more important is you go back a couple weeks and the Live Plus 7 ratings came out about one of us. And that was an episode three weeks ago. And it, again, was second out of 25. Guess what? Beat by forever with a 70% increase. And overall, when you take into account the Live Plus 7 ratings out of 25 main network shows during the week, it was 19th. So it slipped one from the week before, but it's still doing really well. And if you consider the Live Plus 7 ratings like it's second of 25 for the past like couple months, that's some strong performance there. And We'll have to wait till May to get the official announcement, but I, I'm pretty sure that we're going to get an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3 next year. I think so. If we don't, I'm going to be really angry. <laughs> Lauren Smash. We riot. <laughs> Lauren Smash, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, talking about stuff that Lauren loves, she loves Daredevil, and <laughs> we have I love some, Daredevil, too. Yeah, Haley does, too. And we've got some a uh, couple of great articles about this great Netflix series, which, as we record this, and this podcast won't be released until after the series comes out, but we are talking in less than 48 hours, we're going to be watching some Daredevil. Right. So there's tons of promo stuff out for it right now. The first thing we've got in our show notes that you can click on and check out is this cool street art which is like young Matt holding hands with his father who's in his boxing getup walking into, is that Kingpin's head? Uh, yes. Yes, into like an outline of Kingpin's head. And then adult Matt Murdock in the black Daredevil costume is standing in the shadows. So it's really cool looking. And then even though my internet provider tried to prevent me from seeing it, <laughs> I did get to see trailers three and four for Daredevil and so much awesomeness. It's like four and a half minutes between the two. Yeah. But the best line from the whole thing is from Stick talking to young Daredevil. Stop taking a beating and start giving one. (laughs) These were awesome trailers. If there were trailers that they were saving to really excite people right before it came out, these were it. I was like, oh, I am so into this. If I wasn't into it before, I was. I am into it now. The, so very I was definitely into it before. I didn't oh, need yeah. this to help. But <laughs> I saw a picture on Tumblr today, and I can't find it now, or I would have linked it. But y'all know that Fifty Shades of Grey poster where it's the guy standing in front of a city and says, Mr. Grey, we'll see you now. Somebody had done that, but with Vincent D'Onofrio, and it says, Mr. Fisk, we'll see you now. And I just stared at it this morning, <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if this has gone too far or if it's amazing. Yeah, Yeah. it's amazing. Definitely. (laughs) I mean, I took two days off. It's a four day weekend for me. I have other stuff going on, just like Haley's got other stuff going on this weekend, too. (laughs) But we're making time to make sure that we watch all these episodes before we record next week. And that's including this awesome episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. coming up. 
as well as all the other shows that we have to watch between Arrow and Flash and 12 Monkeys. If you haven't checked that out, you better check it out now because the season is ending. So go ahead, check it out. And Justified is ending. It's just, oh, it's a great TV time. I love it. Game of Thrones is coming back this weekend, too, guys. Yes. Oh, oh, my gosh. Night. It's such a good weekend. Game of Thrones and Veep and Louis coming back tomorrow. And Oh, I'm just so happy. And I have to throw a little <sighs> plug in for the new network podcast, uh, Tyrion's Landing. It's not a new podcast. It's actually been around for a while. It's new to the network, though. And they will be live tweeting in some way, shape, manner, or form the entire evening. So go check that out. It'll be hilarious and awesome. Yeah. Moving on to Avengers, we've got a ton of Avengers videos, news, and that sort of thing. And first of all, let's start with TV spot number three. Yeah, number three and number four both released. Of the two, I like four better. It kind (laughs) of gives you an individual look at each Avenger. You get to see Black Widow fighting with Cap Shield, which is kind of awesome. And you get a great line from Hawkeye. (laughs) <laughs> We're fighting an army of robots, and I have a bow and arrow. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most Hawkeye line. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Guys, it's coming so soon. I'm so psyched. Oh, my God. And even though stupid Crockhand tried to prevent me from seeing these TV spots, I saw them. I found a way. Made it happen. And you guys should, too. Yeah, you should see all this stuff that we're sending out. This If you're even remotely, if you're not Wing, basically, you need to check these out because Wing's not excited about this, and that's why he's not on the cast right now. Boo, Wing. But we've established Wing is wrong. So. <laughs> yeah. I think every one of us on the podcast is firmly in belief that Wing is wrong about Avengers. Mm-hmm. There is also other stuff that we're not going to be talking about. There's a featurette trailer reassembled. Reassemble, Stephanie. For those of you who don't get that, that's Johnny Five, short circuit. So go check that out. But also, we have a little story. Adam found this on Age of Ultron 3D Glasses. Yeah, so apparently they're doing some limited edition 3D glasses for this. No Hawkeye ones, but there are seven to choose from. Ultron, Iron Man, Vision, Captain America, Thor, Black Widow, and Hulk's eyebrows. Which really need a team up movie with Talbot's mustache. <laughs> really do. And Adama, too, Agent Gonzalez, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. this is real. <laughs> yeah. So they all look pretty cool. I don't do 3D movies because I have regular glasses, but these do look pretty cool. I don't know if I want the Black Widow ones or the Thor ones. I haven't decided whether I'm going to try to see this in 3D or not. I do have an eye problem. I won't go into it too much on the podcast. Go ahead and hit me up. I'm free to talk about it. So (laughs) it's not like I'm hiding something or whatever, but I have an eye problem that prevents me from really seeing 3D. And I tried Tron Legacy a few years ago to see that in 3D, and I had the worst headache possible. And it's not just a headache. It's actually a vision problem that's causing it. So I don't know. I Are collecting these glasses a big thing now? Since I don't go to 3D movies, I don't know. Not really, but Marvel's been doing these with the past couple. Like I know they did it with the previous Avengers movie, and I want to say there's a couple of other movies that they've done this with, but no, it's it's not really like an every week type of release thing. Okay. Well, Lauren, you also have a trailer to talk about. (laughs) Yes, the uh, Age of Ultron official final trailer, which... I don't remember why I chose it right now, but it's like, oh, I remember why I chose it. Yes. Remember when we saw that clip of the claw looking thing and we were trying to figure out what it was? Yes, yes, yes. Well, yes. whoever said, I think it has something to do with Hawkeye, looks like you're correct. If you go and you put it around a second seven to about second eight, you can see Hawkeye pulling out the thing. and Yeah, it looks like it might be a sheaf of arrows for his quiver or something like that. Yeah. So, congratulations, you were correct. But other than that, it's just kind of more of what we've seen with people throwing things and people being awesome and... Witty one-liners. Yeah, witty one-liners, Scarlet Witch on a motorcycle. But yes, that was the scene that I felt it necessary to bring up because you were right. Black Widow in a lot of these trailers definitely came on strong at the end. I have to say that whoever's doing the promo was saving kind of that for the last. Maybe not the best, but... Uh, What are you talking about? Yes. (laughs) <laughs> well, I don't, I mean, different people have different likes, whatever. I think it was great, yeah, especially with the motorcycle giving Cap his shield back. He's like, I'll pick up after you. Okay, so we've seen that before, but then we see what happens after that. And it's awesome. Yes. So also, we talked about this ultimate Marvel marathon before, which none of us are going to do. Because we're old. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. we can do it ourselves with our own scheduled bathroom breaks. Yes. Our own snacks. 
pause button. Yeah, couch, sleep, in between movies is great. We can, you know, rewind and replay in a continuous loop the part where Hulk smashes Loki. (laughs) (laughs) puny god (laughs) yeah but apparently there is some things afoot at the el capitan theater yeah here's a bit of incentive in la the el capitan theater is going to have special guests it's presented to you by nerdist industries and cheez it's and kellogg's rice krispie treats i love me some cheez it's Uh, so do i they're good but chris hardwick along with other nerdist talent will host the event with help from special guests. Who, which special guests? They don't say. So if you want to go, you'll have to find out. But they're also having costume contests and snack breaks and meals and just collectible things available, prizes, giveaways. So this sounds like an event. Again, I'm not going to it A, because I'm old, and B, because I don't live in LA. <laughs> but if yeah. you are willing to stay up for 29 hours, and if you live in the area... You know, why not check it out? Tell us how it is. We'll be jealous. Just sleep through Incredible Hulk. Sorry, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you Willie. Know, at that point, you don't need a nap. It's like the second movie. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, true. It's going to be around probably like Thor that you're going to feel the need for a nap. Oh, yeah. There are some slow spots in the original Thor. Yeah. But I like the original Thor. Well, and also it's going to be the fourth movie straight so you're going to be at about hour eight of sitting watching movies yeah yeah well you could be energized because okay we talked about special guests we don't know who it's going to be but all the crew from avengers is probably going to be in town doing the promo circuit and for some reason john barrowman will be there i don't know why (laughs) you can't keep john barrowman out (laughs) as my co-host will from crimson comet says he will go to the opening of an envelope (laughs) (laughs) So you're probably going to see a lot of great people there. Probably, I'm just guessing you're going to see a lot of the main actors from Avengers there. So go check that out. And also something else that I found that you should go to check it out. There's a lot of background information on Amazon streaming. I don't know if it's Prime or whatever, but it's streaming on Amazon. So not only do you get all these trailers and commercials, but you get some behind the scenes little featurettes and stuff like that. So go check it out. I haven't had time to delve through all of it lately, but I've seen the uh, titles from it. And I'm like, who I need to watch that? Who I need to watch? And I just didn't have time before the podcast. So I'm throwing it in the show notes. Go ahead. Check it out. It's on Amazon and you will be amazed. We, again, have other trailers that will be in the show notes as well. However, we have something that none of us believe at all. Yeah, so Joss Whedon says that there won't be a shawarma scene at the end of the credits for Age of Ultron. Hmm. He did say there will still be a mid-credit tag scene, which is where they have been doing their sort of plot significant end of the movie stuff. So he said they couldn't top the shawarma scene. I'm not sure if he really means that, or they couldn't top Howard the Duck, but... (laughs) (laughs) But just throwing that out there. I will believe this when they are finished cleaning my theater. Yeah, remember when they filmed the actual trope name or shawarma scene, like, a week before they shipped it out? I'll believe it when I see it. After the Hollywood premiere is when they filmed it. So, actually, people saw the film without the shawarma scene before they filmed the shawarma scene. And this article also said that Captain Marvel won't be introduced here. Another thing I just thought of is, does that mean she might be introduced in the next three weeks before the movie shows up? Or does it mean they're going to introduce Carol Danvers and not Captain Marvel? Yeah. Are they playing the word game? Or is she in the shawarma scene that they're not going to have? I don't believe any of this. (laughs) I call shenanigans. (laughs) Lies, lies, lies. Yeah, rule number one, Joss Whedon lies. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Just... (laughs) No, rule one is he kills characters. Rule two is he lies. Okay, fair enough. Fair (laughs) enough. And good thing he's not going to be part of the universe anymore. (laughs) I wouldn't go that far, but... There's a couple of spoilerly news articles that we ran into about who's playing what roles and who's cast as who and who's going to show up in Avengers or not. I'm going to throw these in the show notes. Check on them at your peril. We're not going to talk about them. We've decided we're not going to actively spoil you. But if you are interested in spoilers, you can check it out. Snape kills Dumbledore. <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> just saying. Come on. I was on movie three. Oh, you just <laughs> ruined it. You ruined it. All right. Well, we have a little bit of non-news news talking about 
movies beyond Avengers, and uh, I think it has to do with uh, our friend from The Winter Soldier. Well, Frank Grillo, who we are pretty sure is going to be playing Crossbones, just tweeted April 6th, which was not today, I think. I don't remember days. Two Two days days ago. ago. Two days ago. Yes. Thank you, y'all and phone. For those of us that experienced time linearly, it was two days ago. Okay, yes. I experienced time in a nonlinear fashion. But anyway, he tweeted a hashtag civil war is on the horizon and it's going to be a free for all. Frank Grillo, Mm. you little twerp. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Like not news. I mean, we knew he was coming back. I know, but just every time he just brings this up, it's just everybody on Twitter is just like, ah, because you know, you know, he's just poking at us. Just poking. Just a little bit, but I mean, he's having some fun, and it's at the height of the promos for Avengers, so why not grab a little bit of that? You know, it's so buried, though, that if we weren't talking about it, I probably wouldn't even pay any attention to it. But something that you should pay attention to is this next news story, because it is awesome. Well, parts of it are awesome. (laughs) The good news for us is that things like Guardians of the Galaxy, Captain America the Winter Soldier, The Flash... The Miss Marvel first trade paperback, they were all nominated for Hugo Awards. The bad news is everything else dealing with the Hugo Awards this year, which I won't go into, but I recommend that you look into because wow, the Hugo Awards are just drama every year. This year, it's just a culmination of wow. But go Miss Marvel, go pretty much all the comics except for one I'm going for. Dramatic presentation, long form. I haven't seen Interstellar, but I liked the rest of them. I bought that Blu-ray. I haven't watched it yet, but I bought it. Best dramatic presentation, short form. We had Doctor Who Listen. We had The Flash Pilot. We had Game of Thrones, Mountain and the Viper. All good. We had Grimm, Once We Were Gods. And we had Orphan Black by Means, which has never yet been tried, which is honestly, much as it pains me to say that one is probably the one that I'm going for. See, I am on a Flash podcast, but I've got to vote for the Game of Thrones episode, The Mountain and the Viper. It was really good. That was actually alluded to by Penny on last week's Big Bang Theory. Mm. It just, it continues to blow my mind anytime pop culture makes Game of Thrones or Song of Ice and Fire references, because where were you when I was 16? (laughs) (laughs) They were halfway through book one. I actually heard that Sesame Street made a Game of Thrones (laughs) reference recently. The Sesame Street thing was wonderful. If y'all don't know what we're talking about, Google or YouTube, a game of chairs, Sesame Street, and just, <laughs> it, it is beautiful. That and Jon Snow makes a terrible dinner party guest from uh, <laughs> from Seth Meyers. They're both oh, just wow. fantastic. Yeah, so I don't know who's going to win, but we'll see. And the Flash pilot, by the way, I know you said you wanted to go with the Game of Thrones, but the Flash pilot was awesome to see. And it was. And I'm so glad that it kind of leaked early, but uh, it was just, it was fun to watch. Yeah. Honestly, these categories out of all the Hugo nominations are probably the the ones that were the least, let's say, cluttered up by certain factions in the Hugos this year. Yeah. Things got very shady. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of drama going on there. Imagine that. io9 and the Mary Sue and Salon all have very, very well written up articles on it. Pretty much every author, sci-fi fantasy author you follow probably has a blog either written or coming about this. George R. R. Martin just wrote one today. So if you're curious, just look it up. You'll find it. Awards like this, I mean, in the podcast circles, it's drama with the podcastawards.com. They do their best, but there's always something going on about it. And it's like, whatever, I don't care. I'm just having fun. Let's just have some fun. And Talking about having fun, a former Ghostbuster is rumored to be playing a Marvel character. Yes, he might be playing King T'Chaka in Black Panther. Who is King T'Chaka? He's T'Challa's dad. Who is T'Challa? Black Panther, you heathens. (laughs) (laughs) Who's playing him? Play Black Panther? No, T'Chaka. We didn't say who's playing him yet. Oh, Ernie Hudson. Yes. Sorry. That's, I thought everyone, okay, sorry. (laughs) <laughs> yes, Winston Zedmore from Ghostbusters, he's in pretty much, he just shows up in geek things, just constantly. I mean, you said a Ghostbuster was playing him, it could have been Bill Murray for all I knew. <laughs> it could have been. Okay, sorry. I'd, I'd pay to see that. <laughs> Bill Murray in the Marvel Universe? Yeah, that'd be funny. Uh, that'd be hilarious, especially in that role. But yeah, Ernie <laughs> yeah. Hudson, the guy that wants to tell you about the Twinkie. Yeah. Yes. Excellent casting. 
Yeah, he's been in so much other stuff besides Ghostbusters, and he's good in pretty much all of it. And he's a regular on a lot of con circuits. He's a nice guy. So I don't know. I think I could see this. This will be interesting. But yeah, it's just a rumor for the motion. But still, it'd be cool. Yep. And something else that is cool and I've been waiting to see for a very long time and waiting to purchase is the rogue cut of X-Men Days of Future Past. Right. We talked about it when the first DVD and Blu-ray set came out months ago now that there was going to be an extended cut of the movie. And it came out recently that that extended cut is going to have 17 minutes of additional footage. And I still haven't been able to find an exact release date for when that's supposed to come out. Yeah, it wasn't in the article. But it is coming. I remember hearing last year, like, oh, it's going to be out next April. So it's April. Come on. Where's my rogue cut? They're probably waiting for all of the copies they made of the theatrical release to sell first. Well, I'm not buying one. I'm waiting for my rope cut. Ditto. Same. Yeah, same here. I've been patiently waiting. But Which, by the way, apparently this weekend, the HBO movie on Saturday is Days of Future Past. Ooh, so. Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Got my date. <laughs> HBO. Me and HBO are like this. It's this time of year. Well, yeah, and another fun thing, I guess, is we've... Somebody's actually seen some um, Deadpool suit running around on a set. We are seeing a lot of the Deadpool running around on sets. Just Jared has put up a whole bunch of pictures and it looks honestly really good. And the thing that's kind of the most noticeable is the way the eyes are being done, which honestly has me really hopeful. It looks kind of goofy. It has the trademark look of the Daredevil mask, but then there's a hole where the eyes should be and a bunch of dots. What People are thinking, and what this honestly makes most sense, is that they're going to CGI it so that we can get the comic booky facial expressions. Ooh, that'll be fantastic. Right? That's <laughs> going to be wonderful. I, I'm starting to really look forward to the Daredevil movie. Something that I would not have pictured myself saying four years ago. Deadpool, you mean? Deadpool. De- what did I say? Yeah, she's excited. She can't talk. Yeah. What did I say? You said Daredevil. Oh, I'm excited for that, too. <laughs> it's all happening. There's a lot going on right now. <laughs> it's all happening, and I'm doing a Kermit flail, but you can't see me. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever wake up in the morning and think it was all just a dream, and then you realize it's real? No, constantly. <laughs> I am in a constant state of this is actually happening. How is this real life? Game of Thrones is on TV. All of the Marvel is happening all the time, and I'm married. How is this happening? <laughs> like a grown up. That's weird. I know. I was thinking I'm old right now. Yeah, like I was I actually think because I hurt myself in the gym on Monday and I went to the gym today and I couldn't work out as well as I did. I mean, I cut out half my workout. I'm like, oh, I'm old. This sucks. And then I'm thinking, this is great. I mean, the Tron casting was announced. I'm a sci fi yes! guy. And yes! I'm like, oh, the Tron is going to be back. You've got Olivia Wilde and uh, Garrett. Uh, Headland. Headland is coming back. And so Tron is filming right now, I believe, up in Canada. And you've got just all, a bunch of stuff happening. And I'm like, oh, this is just so cool. And comic book stuff is happening. And it's so cool. And talking about comic books, actually, we've got a comic book expert. Well, we always have a comic book expert on the podcast because Haley and Lauren are here. But we also have an additional one on the podcast today, Adam. And uh, he's run into uh, Shield number four. So tell us about it. So it just came out today. So I wasn't sure if I'd have a chance to read it before this because it's the only one that's running currently that I actually get physical copies of. And this one has... The Invisible Woman as the uh, guest superhero. Yeah. Unlike last month, we actually do get someone from the show other than Coulson in it. Simmons has a few scenes. Still not much of May or Fitz, which is disappointing. And they don't have one of those Fitz and his holographic monkey Mm. comic strips at the end of this one. I was wondering about that since they transitioned from the monkey to the dog in the show. Yeah. Oh, I had a thought. Yeah. Maybe Fitz will get a monkey and then the monkey will get a puppy. Ah! Ah! <laughs> helper monkey gets helper puppy. Exactly. Yeah, but this issue did have some pretty good art, including some good frames of Coulson. Okay. Not my favorite, but better than, but I liked it more than last month. And next issue has Scarlet Witch. And then issue seven, they're finally bringing Quake into it. Mm. Yay! It'll definitely be fun. I did see it drop in the Comixology app because I subscribed to it. This one, I just haven't had a chance to read it. So yeah. looking forward to that. Also, 
If anybody has signed up for the Marvel Crate, by the way, I got an email because I signed up for it and they said, uh, we're going to have to cancel your subscription because there was something up with PayPal or something like that, that they couldn't take subscriptions. So they canceled everybody's subscription. So I'll still get the first crate, but then I'm going to have to re-up for it. And they said, don't go back and re-up for it because we have to fix whatever is wrong. And I haven't gotten another email saying, hey, come back and subscribe. So can't wait for that first Marvel crate that's going to be next month. It's going to be awesome. And I actually have another comic thing that I tried calling in a few weeks ago, but ran out of time on the voicemail. Ah, dang that two minute limit. So I was looking through, unlike Haley, I don't go back all the way to the 60s to start reading stuff on Marvel Unlimited. I just... Wait a minute. She actually goes all the way back to 1925 in DC. 1935. Oh, Unfortunately, okay. DC doesn't have something like Marvel Unlimited, at least that I'm aware of. That's true. But a while back, they had a sort of featured hero thing on Quake, and that led me to a series that I'm pretty sure has been the playbook for a lot of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and, to a lesser extent, Agent Carter and a couple of the movies. There's a series called Secret Warriors that ran from 2009 to 2011, and Stop me when this sounds familiar. After S.H.I.E.L.D. is dismantled, Nick Fury puts together a team that includes Daisy Johnson to keep other organizations like HYDRA and groups within the U.S. government from taking advantage. I remember that. That was the one that had, like, Phobos on the team for a while, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, actually. Yeah, I remember. I read a little bit of that. Yeah, and the first arc was called Nick Fury, Agent of Nothing which Agent of Nothing was a line they used a few times in the episode Providence right after, well, the one after, the one after Winter Soldier. <laughs> and one of the Fury's bases in the comics is Providence. And first arc ends with Fury's team breaking into a hammer base, which was sort of the government's shield replacement, and getting into a sort of three-way fight with Hammer and Hydra, and stealing a couple helicarriers. Yeah, because you can, like, steal those all the time. Sort of like the team in this, towards the beginning of the season, broke into a U.S. Army facility and stole a Quinjet to get cloaking technology. Yep. So there are other teams that are introduced later, including the Howling Commandos, which has Sitwell in it, <laughs> not as a Hydra agent, one led by Alexander Pierce, <laughs> and one that included John Garrett, who was a cyborg. <laughs> And then in one of the later arcs, they revealed another group that they were fighting named Leviathan, <laughs> based in Russia. That is, I think, <laughs> where Leviathan was first introduced. Yeah. yeah. Well, we yeah. were wondering about that, and that actually turned out to be a fun story for Agent Carter. Yeah, and I still, I think I have like a third of the issues to go. I think there were like 28 or something, but I have to mix that in with all the sorry, six months delayed releases weekly releases on Marvel Unlimited and all my DC pulls, so it takes a while sometimes. Awesome. It's always awesome to talk comic books because I just need to get into them more, that's for sure. Yeah. Comic books are happiness. I spent a good chunk of my day today reading the uh, current run of Miss Marvel, the one with Kamala Khan. Oh, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, that one is a fun one. I read as much as I could last night before I couldn't hold my eyes open anymore. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's generally what I generally just plop into bed and yeah. pass out. So, yeah, it wasn't a whole lot. And actually, one of the Marvel Unlimited releases this week was the Spider Man issue she was in, where she was talking about Spider Man fan fiction and shipping and stuff. Yeah, Kamala Khan <laughs> writes fanfic. She is awesome. Of course, she does. Oh, I can't wait till I catch up. <laughs> <laughs> That was a lot of news. I think we're going to even see more Avengers news next week. So just be prepared and we will talk about that. In the meantime, on the weekends, you can catch All Things Good and Neary. It is the live Sunday morning podcast on the Gonna Geek Network starting at 11 a.m. Eastern. And this past week, it was episode 153, Internet Disaster Day. Anthony's internet was dead. Naki's was spotty. But don't worry. Chris got some reinforcements for this cast. Wing and SP were back to save the day. Woohoo! I saved the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And help fill in the gaps. Wing, of course, talks Batman. Yes, he did. And Chris brings in the knowledge on how to run Android apps in the Google Chrome, which was interesting, by the way, because you can do Instagram that way. 
And Naki tells us all about the new Guardians of the Galaxy porn parody, which we didn't talk about <laughs> in this podcast, but you could go and listen to All Things Good and Nerdy and hear about it. We talked about the uh, promo picture, but yes, the trailer's out and it's actually hilarious. It is. So I'd recommend you watch it unless you're underage or offended by that sort of thing. So go check out All Things Good and Nerdy on the Gunna Geek Network, episode 153, Internet Disaster Day. As every week, we got some wonderful feedback from you guys. So thank you very much for getting in touch with us on all the means, Twitter, Facebook, writing reviews on iTunes or YouTube or whatever. We really appreciate that. And to start off our feedback this week, we have a tweet from our pal Cody, who lives a short like 12 miles away from me. At player type zero says, unpopular hashtag Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. opinion that at Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. will hate. I'm not a big fan of the science babies. Boo. You're dead to me, Cody. So former pal. Boo dead this man. <laughs> oh, Cody, you owe the ladies something to make up for him. You might as well buy them like a baby Groot or something because, yeah. We can be bribed with Pop Funko figures, so. There you go. <laughs> Did you say can or can't? Because I can. <laughs> I said can. Okay, yes, yes, that's true. Yes, I can, can too, by the way. The only pop co- or cheap Funko yes. figure I have right now is the Marty with the uh, DeLorean. So looking forward to my next pop Funko purchase. Mary Kirk at Geek Kurt on Twitter said, We called it Science Baby's Plan featuring the return of Samich. Yay! And was part of the live tweet that Lauren... I actually, when preparing for this podcast, I went through back all the live tweets. You guys were having some fun last night. There was much rejoicing. It was great. I know, blowing up my phone, and I couldn't check it because I hadn't seen the episode yet. (laughs) I I know, I know. It is live tweet. It is spoilerly. I mean, we try not to, but I mean, heck, you're watching the episode. Yeah, right. Yeah, I try not to be spoilery. I try to just mostly be like, woo, and put bad jokes and stuff, but Sometimes it happens. I try to avoid it, but sometimes right. it happens. Yeah, this episode, it was hard to avoid. Hey, I didn't post the spoiler. I didn't post that Deathlock was back, so. Yeah. What about Sierra? Although then Marvel was, I didn't post that either, I don't think. Good job. But then Marvel was like, if this spoiler doesn't uh, start trending, then y'all are doing it wrong. So then I felt a little <laughs> guilty, but I still didn't. <laughs> I know, I was looking at their Facebook post today, the Marvel Facebook thing, and they said, spoilers, don't read this unless you've seen the episode last night, and in the title it was Deathlock. I'm like, come on, guys. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Hashtag fail. Okay, Consultant Op also tweeted us, and he said, I believe your Deathlock question was answered. Yes, sir. Yes, it was. Thank you very much. (laughs) Been tracking that for quite some time. I'm glad to see it happen. We actually got a late voicemail to the podcast and i'm i don't know i really haven't had a chance to listen to this do you think we should play it Mm, i don't know it's from willie d nelson all right then i guess you sure okay here we go hey fan and friend of the show here willie d nelson i have a few things to say since i've been out for the last couple weeks but i finally called up and i have some stuff to talk about first thing i wanted to call in so bad two weeks ago and say that I thought that cabin looked just like the one at the end of the excellent movie, The Incredible Hole. It probably isn't the same one, but it looked eerily similar to that one when he was over there meditating on the floor. Had a little crooked smile like, yeah, I'm starting to like being the Hulk. And uh, I kind of got a theory here, guys. Stick with me now. I feel Gonzalez is part of Hydra. I don't know quite know what it is. There's just something about it. Like, I don't think he was defending himself from being attacked and when we saw it in the past. I don't think he was doing that. But uh, that's my theory out there, my loose base theory. And uh, at the very beginning of the show with the whole Honest Eddie thing, I saw when they drove off, they had a license plate on the vehicle. I thought dealers only had dealer plates. A little small thing, but I thought I'd share that a little bit too. And I, I'm also, I guess that wasn't Adelaide they blew up earlier. I thought, that, I was like, no, they blew up Adelaide. So it was just some random Cree temple. Glad to hear about that. And man, they got me up to like the last like minute and a half. I was about to say, I really hate Simmons. Screw Simmons. Team fit all the way. No more science babies. Down with the science babies. Rah, rah, rah. But I guess they're working together. I can accept. I don't really like the way Simmons has been acting, but I'm still team fits all the way. And I uh, heard you guys talking about some Firefly going on. 
I know uh, Sky's dad can definitely sing the Firefly theme song. Take my love, take my land, take me where I cannot stand. You can't take the sky from me. He's looking for a sky, and I, I, I kind of like uh, Mr. Hyde over there. I like his storyline. And just to say, my favorite Firefly episode would have to be Jamestown. Just because of the theme song and how crazy he looks in it. Jane's my favorite character. Well, anyway, enjoy your guys' podcast. Keep putting them out, and I'll keep listening. Willie D. Nelson out. Have a good one. Thank you for the voicemail, Willie. Actually, it was a couple when we were able to splice it together before the podcast. The cabin looked like in a, the similar one at the end of The Incredible Hulk. You know, it could actually be. It could be the, a similar set that they used. It also looked like the cabin that was used in several sets of Stargate SG-1. So i really not sure. It might just be a common thing. I don't know. Well, I doubt it's in Vancouver, so I don't think it's the <laughs> yeah. uh, SG-1 one. But That would be kind of amazing if that's the cabin that he's at at the end of Incredible Hulk. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't think that he was in contact with S.H.I.E.L.D. until Avengers, and and those inner walls were definitely the same as the holding cell on the bus. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure if he was t- talking, if Willie was talking about it was the same actual cabin, like somebody owns it somewhere, or if it was like the Hulk-proofed room. I, I wasn't sure. Maybe we'll hear from him on that next week. The theory, though, Gonzalez is part is Hydra. Yeah, I, that's definitely a possibility. I don't think we can throw that out right now. I think it's a possibility. I think it's more likely, though, that he's just gone too far in one direction and that he just won't trust Coulson and it's going to yeah. blow up in his face. Initially, I thought that he could be Hydra, too, but I'm starting to think that, yeah, that's exactly it. That he's just been so burned by not trusting that this is what where he's at now. So he's definitely doing an Adama move there, huh? Yeah. And last season, they were basically teasing Hand being Hydra, the whole, or at least some kind of villain, the whole time. Right. And she wasn't, so... No, it was Sitwell. It was Sitwell on her team. It was Hydra, yeah. Honest Eddie, with the license plate, the Jeep was actually owned by Honest Eddie. It was not a car for sale, so that's why it had a license plate on it. Uh, they didn't blow up Adelan in that it was just a random temple. Yeah, I think we've mentioned that before, but we didn't know for sure. I, this might have confirmed that. I don't know. But then again, would, do you think that the Inhumans would know what Adelan was? They might have stories about it, even if nobody has ever been there. Mm-hmm. Maybe a legend. Or maybe this was the original Adelan, and then there, and then the faction that's going to be in the movie made a new one or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we talked about the whole Simmons Fitz thing. I'm disagreeing with, I think, everybody on the point. Science babies forever. Yeah. Science babies forever! I think there's a possibility there, and I'm just going to leave it at that. And then uh, Firefly, yes, all hail yeah. Firefly. Yeah, I did think of that same pun with Sky and the Firefly <laughs> theme at the end of last week's episode and tweeted it, but... Yeah. yeah. And then moving on, on YouTube, we got a nice comment from Liquid Camus. said, uh, nice podcast. I'll follow it from now on. So, hey. Woo, thank you. Our YouTube channel is being used. Yeah, that's great. Hi, Liquid Cadmus. Do you guys have any other feedback that you want to add for the week? Nope. All right. We'll walk it on out then. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the podcast. We really appreciate you stopping by. We love your feedback. As you just heard, we have a bunch of things, of ways to contact us. Voicemail. You can leave us a review on iTunes. You can leave us a comment on YouTube. You can catch us at our website, gunnageek.com, and leave a comment on the forum. We got Twitter. We got the Facebook. If you leave us a voicemail line, it's 1-844-THE-BUS-1 or 844-843-2871. As mentioned before, next week we'll be talking about Melinda. We'll also be talking about our first impressions on Daredevil. And just to remind everybody, we'll be talking extensively about Daredevil episode by episode this summer when we're down from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And we will also be talking, uh, we might have a little bit of surprise next week as well, because we had that J. August Richards surprise this week. So we'll see what we can put together next week. If you are new to the podcast, thank you very much for listening. Please drop us a line and tell us how you found out about us. We would appreciate that. Just want to say thank you again to Adam for joining us this week. It was awesome to have you on. It's always awesome to have you on. 
And uh, we really appreciate your patronage to the podcast. Thanks. Thanks to Willie for uh, his voicemail. Uh, don't all don't agree with all of it, but a lot of good ideas there. Yeah, and thanks to everyone that came up for the live chat tonight. Ilyana, even though you had to leave early, Willie and Richard, we appreciate you guys chatting with us while we try and do this show. Absolutely. And we're live every week at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central on gunnageek.com slash live. So you can check us out there. You can stream us on YouTube. You can stream us on Mixler and also join our great chat on Chatwing. I think it's working out great. Yeah. Oh, and guest 352. Thank you, too. Yeah, there you go. Thank you for everyone who's commented to us on Twitter this week, whether it's on the live tweets or as you are watching or just randomly throughout the week because you saw something that, you know, and thought of us. A set, Mr. Paracletes, Richard, Willie, Ileana, Mary Kirk, just everyone. Thank you so much. We really, really appreciate it. Except for Cody. <laughs> <laughs> and if you haven't checked out Lauren's live tweets, if, if you're watching the episode and you're not, you, you don't have tw- your Twitter app open, you really should because Lauren is, is one of the most amazing live tweeters. I think Haley and I combined cannot <laughs> reach the greatness that Lauren does when she live tweets. <laughs> so it's really fun just to play along. I like uh, watching it when I can and uh, seeing what Lauren has to tweet. And also, I want to say thank you very much to everybody that's listening on YouTube. And go ahead and leave a comment. We appreciate it. And uh, we do uh, appreciate you stopping by at any of the places that you can listen to us. So, until next time, I'm Agent Stargate Pioneer. I'm Agent Haley. I'm Agent Lauren. And I'm Adam. Bye-bye. See you guys next week. Bye. Later. Thank you for listening. If you want to leave us feedback, go to gunageek.com and you'll find all of our contact information in other shows. You can also visit legendsofshield.com where you'll find our complete archive of podcasts. The music heard on this podcast is by Kevin McLeod and can be found at incompetech.com. The opinions heard on this podcast are those of the individual host and do not represent legends, stream, or gun a geek. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the property of the Disney Corporation. No infringement is intended. Were you a fan of the Marvel Universe or uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. before? Oh yeah, I have a thousand comics at home to prove it. Yeah, I was an avid comic book collector as a child. Yeah. So, obviously, it's like one of those surrealistic dream come trues, you know, that I would be playing something that I spent so much time as a kid being fascinated by. And I have it all, man. I got Secret Wars. I have the Guide to the Marvel Universe, which is where I started my research for Deathlock. I I had all the volumes of Guide to the Marvel Universe, and I didn't remember that I had all the volumes, but I should have remembered because I'm a Virgo and we complete things. Um, So I had every issue. There was Deathlock under D, and I started reading right there. Um, what was it like to wear the Deathlock armor on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Hot, sweaty, and annoying. (laughs) I'm only joking about the annoying part. It was very, um, it's very elaborate. There's a lot of layers to it. It's made of rubber, cotton, metal, plastic, aluminum. Like, every, every material you can imagine is on my body. And, um... It's pretty draining, um, it's, and you have to wear it for like 8 to 12 hours, so um, it's, it's a lot. It's not uncomfortable, but it also makes me feel like the character. You know, it's, it makes me bigger, and um, it's very cumbersome, it's very heavy, and in my mind, the first thing I always remind myself is I weigh 500 pounds. <laughs> That's how much that lock. I read that in one of the comics, um, and I adopted that. And I was like, okay, I weigh 500 pounds. And it's not hard for me to move, but I'm just heavy. And that's how I feel. So, Kind of like how that cape makes you feel <laughs> like special right now. Like it makes you feel like you could kind of do anything, right? That's what a cape does. Even if it's a towel and you throw it on your back, it makes you feel like you can fly, you know? So that's how the costume is. It makes me feel like I can fly. Thank you. I believe I can fly. (laughs) Sorry.
Talk to me, uh, Vader. No, I'm sorry. Talk to me. Um, let's see. We could be a lot of people right now. Who are you right now? Obi-Wan. I figured. I should have known that. <laughs> um, Lame. And eight, in Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., were you surprised when Ward was actually in Hydra? Yeah. <laughs> I was surprised and I felt betrayed. <laughs> I felt betrayed, quite frankly. Were you surprised? Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty surprising. I didn't see that one coming at all. It was a big surprise. So, yes. May the force be with you. He must be great to play. Absolutely, yeah. It is a really great character to play, especially because when I showed up to do the pilot of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., obviously you're doing a pilot, so you don't know if the show is going to be picked up or not. So you don't know if you're going to do another episode or not because the show may never get picked up. But, um, you know, we were shooting the pilot and I just, you know what's so funny? I remember when I read the script for the first time, I called my manager and I said, somehow I have the best part in this. It was like, I have the best role. Um, but in some ways, I always see my character as the best role, and that's part of my process, you know what I mean? Just like falling in love with the character, and I really fell in love with Mike pretty quickly, and his story, and his relationship with his son. So, I always think about the first time you see a character, it kind of tells you everything you need to know about the person, and I know that all my character wants to do is be a great father to his son, and that's the beauty of science fiction, because such universal themes are dealt with, you know, themes that we can all relate to, like being a good parent. Like, who can't relate to that? And then whatever the circumstances are, Hydra, S.H.I.E.L.D., Captain America, Winter Soldier, the Inhumans, whatever it is, that core is never lost. So that's how I think about the character when I'm playing him. As far as and I bet Holly Berry, y'all. <laughs> oh my God, I forgot my first name when I met her. Literally, I literally forgot my first name. <laughs> we were doing the table read for this movie I did called Why Do Fools Fall in Love, and we were sitting at the table, and she comes in with the angels singing, and there's music playing, and you know I really was like, oh, I can't wait to meet her. I'm so excited. And then I was talking to somebody else. I didn't realize she was making the rounds and introducing herself to everybody, which is really cool because sometimes people don't do that. And um, I just felt this, this arm of Jesus pulling me around. <laughs> and I'm staring into the sun and she goes, hi, I'm Hallie. And I went. <laughs> it starts with a J, I think. <laughs> And I was like, I'm so sorry, but I just cannot remember my name right now. <laughs> and she was like, you're cute, that's cute. Flash forward to many years later, because when I first met her, I was in my early 20s, right? Now I'm in New York, it's like I'm 33. You know, I'm living there doing another show called Conviction. And in the tabloids, they have these pictures of her every day. And I'm looking at the tabloid pictures of her, and I'm like, this looks like my street, the street I live on in New York. And I'm like, I wonder if we live on the same street. And then I figured out, yeah, we live on the same street. So I was like, I'm gonna bump into her any day now, I can't wait. So I go to this Starbucks every morning, and the kids in the Starbucks are like, ooh, Halle Berry was just in here. And I was like, oh, cool, I worked with her, you know, I would love to see her again or whatever. And uh, they were like, yeah, you know, yeah, she comes here all the time, you know, and they, you know, they were like, you know, they really had a high opinion of me, I guess, in general. So it was a nice little report. Flash forward to, I come in to the Starbucks, and Halle Berry is paying for her coffee. So I walk up to the register. Now all the kids in the Starbucks are now my friends, right? So I was like, excuse me, Miss Barry. Um, I'm Jay. We did Why Do Fools Fall in Love together. And she turns around. She goes, oh, hi, Jay. And I have that same panicky reaction that I had when I was like 21. <laughs> so, but I started off real strong, right? So then she's like, um, I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to bother you. I'm just going to go over here. And she was like, no, no, no. What are you doing in New York? And I was like, oh, I'm doing this show called conviction but you're busy just you know go back to getting your coffee she was like no 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 where do you live and I was like oh yeah I live up up here you know I'm just gonna go and, I left. and then I came back and all the kids in the Starbucks was like oh no you didn't dog she wanted to talk to you you was running out of here so that's my Halle Berry story <laughs> Well, talking about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., we did have some ratings for this week. Haley, you are our ratings queen, so what do you got? Nothing yet. 
This week, Afterlife had a rating of 4.24. 